that travels the world but always stays in one corner. Hello and welcome back to the Study To Project. My name is Ruby and today I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the humble postage stamp. This one here is a one penny one. So I tried to write a letter every single day and I had no idea that this little sticker had such a rich history. So I thought that I'd run through the things that I learned because maybe you'll find it as interesting as I do. We start our journey all the way back in the 17th century. So the Royal Mail was founded in 1516, but it wasn't until 1635 that the Royal Mail services were made available to the public. Before this, it had been used by members of parliament, by the royals, but not by Joe Bloggs. It also wasn't until 1600 that the General Post Office was founded. Both of these things, extension of the Royal Mail services to the public and the founding of the General Post Office made the postal system more egalitarian and both of these changes were under Charles I so he did actually bring some pretty good postal reform. Sorry I'm starting to cry because of hay fever, it's not because I don't like stamps or maybe I'm crying with happiness because this is just so interesting. So the General Post Office was a post office in London and it was the only post office in England. There is so much to say about postal offices but I'm not going to go into that in this video because otherwise I will be here all day. The important thing that we do need to note though is that the General Post Office didn't deliver letters within London. So you could send a letter out to someone in Devon, but you couldn't send a letter to someone in London. So this meant that for the most part, people were relying on private couriers, on porters to deliver their personal and business letters. But this all changed in 1680 when William Dockra founded the London Penny Post. This was a postal system that people could use to send letters and small parcels to people within London. Everything had a fixed price of one penny and you couldn't send anything over a pound in weight, but that wasn't too problematic for most people. And okay, this is really, really cool. Delivery was guaranteed in four hours. I mean, come on, that rivals even next day delivery service now. Four hours delivery. So, the London Penny Post was a great system, but, but it was available only in London as the name indicates. And this meant it wasn't a very useful service for people not in London, people who were living in the rest of England. So to post letters to anyone else in London, obviously you'd be using the general post office, but there were persisting problems with this post office. Number one, letters were often not prepaid, which meant that the recipient would have to pay the price of the postage. And this was problematic because the price of a piece of post would often be decided by how far the person had to travel to deliver that piece of post. And so it was hard to predict. So often people would receive letters and have a fee to pay that they didn't want to pay. And the second issue was to do with free franking. So basically if you worked in Parliament, so if you were an MP, if you were in the House of Commons or the House of Lords, or if you were part of the royal family, you could frank and receive letters for free. Basically one of the perks that came with the job. But this brought problems because lots of people would go to their MPs and ask them to frank their letters so that they wouldn't have to pay for it. So this meant that the postal system was lo losing out money that they needed. Basically they couldn't guarantee that people were paying for their postage. This all changed in 1840, when the first postage stamp as we know it was created. This was invented by Sir Roland Hill, who was a teacher who was later knighted for his work actually. In 1837, he published a seminal paper, Post Office Reform, Its Importance and Practicability. In this, he outlined how he thought the postal system needed to change so it could be more efficient. And one of the things that he outlined in a letter to a chancellor was the idea of the postage stamp. He described it as a bit of paper just large enough to bear the stamp and covered at the back with a gluttonous wash. So then you could lick the postage stamp, stick it on. So the Chancellor did get back to Roland Hill and even though it took three years, they ended up introducing the first set of postal stamps ever in May 1840. So funnily enough, we've actually just passed the 180 year anniversary of the first ever postage stamp. These stamps were engraved with a picture of Queen Victoria and interestingly, the way that these were printed, i.e. with engravings, they did this because it was the hardest thing for someone to copy, which meant that you couldn't forge stamps and pretend you paid when you hadn't. So the cost of a stamp was one penny, and this covered the cost of sending a letter anywhere in England. Interestingly, this was actually also before the invention of perforated paper. Uh, so the first perforated stamp wasn't introduced until 1854. And so they were all printed on pieces of paper and they'd have to be individually cut. Also to abolish that issue of people just going to the MPs and getting them to frank their letters. Free franking was 
also abolished for everyone, including Queen Victoria. So Queen Victoria decided that she wasn't going to have free postage so that she could set a good example for the rest of the people in the UK. So the postage stamp had a significant impact. It made it so much easier for people to send letters because they could prepay them as opposed to having to rely on their recipient paying for them. And this means that we can see a huge increase in letter writing between 1839 and 1850. So after the postage stamp was introduced in the UK, it was gradually introduced into loads of other countries all over the world. The first being Switzerland, in 1843. Later in 1843, Brazil introduced its first postage stamp. However, interestingly, they didn't use a picture of Emperor Pedro II. Rather, they used this design, and that's because they didn't want for the emperor's face to be disfigured when the postmark was put on. So we use these kinds of stamps, the ones that you've got to lick the back of, like this one. I haven't licked this one because I'm just saving it. These kinds of stamps would be were used up until 1993, and it wasn't until then that the self-adhesive sticker ones were introduced. The first self-adhesive stamp was actually introduced in the US in 1974. However, even though these could stick to the paper, they weren't ideal because they disfigured the colour on the front of the picture. So the US Postal Service only ended up printing one round of these and they didn't print again until 1994. The first successful self-adhesive stamps were introduced in 1993 in the UK. Oh, and also side note, this is quite cool. If you ever get collector stamps, you'll see that they are not self-adhesive and that's because it's easier for collectors to store if they're not sticky. These are the collector stamps I've got and I don't collect them, I just, they're just nicer to send to people. So I got the Harry Potter ones, the Romantic Poets. And then for my international letters, I've got these ones, which are a Scottish Hawthorne, I think. So thank you so much for watching this video. Remember that every single day at 6pm, the Study Chew Project posts a new video teaching you about something new so that you can continue to learn and be excited about learning and education during lockdown. So thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.